You decided to wear hijab one day when you were 19. Yes. Uh, what drew you to it then? You know what? I had been going to a Saturday school, which was an Islamic Saturday school, um, when I was like really young, like between 10 to 12. And um, it was girls only. And we would wear the scarf um, on Saturdays. And then after the school, we would take it off. So I think I was used to it at a young age. And then I always kind of didn't fully understand why I took it off. Um, and also, I lived in a very accepting area in London. So I put it on and like it didn't change anything like nobody even asked me the day I wore it for the first time like you know why are you doing that like you know it just felt like so much there was so much understanding what kind of made it complicated was then a few years later unfortunately when you know really terrible kind of attacks and terrorism was happening I think then Muslim women kind of became a bit more politicized um I think people who didn't understand the scarf felt a little bit um unsure about what the significance of it was but also didn't feel empowered to ask those questions or engage with it um it's very striking you know it's, it's very difficult to ignore and and it's normal to have questions so i don't really mind it like in the book i joke about it. i have sections where i kind of um riff on the questions i get asked so it's normal but at the same time you know I get it. I get that, you know, it's people's own choice at the end of the day. And I think where people might not know many Muslims, they may attach a meaning to it that doesn't even exist. So, yeah, I started wearing it because I kind of like really just liked the way it looked. I feel like um, it was my thing. And um, obviously when that bad things like extremism started happening, I didn't want my thing to be now tainted with what was being happening sorry what was going on or I didn't want it to be taken away from me so that's why I kind of held on to it because otherwise it just felt like this special thing that I kind of chose to walk chose to wear kind of like would be kind of completely um I don't know taken away the meaning uh it was really hard at some times for sure but it just felt silly because it's just a piece of cloth as well at the end of the day, you know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. You mentioned that, um, you know, a lot of people don't understand the significance of the headscarf. What yeah. What is the significance of the headscarf? There's a lot to it, really. I feel like it's a relationship that you have with it. You know, um, you, you kind of grow with it. So in Islam, it's about modesty. I guess it kind of reminds the person who's wearing it about modesty um, or whatever it means to them. Um I think that's what it is really and I think I think it's just also it could be a lot of things to different people it's just being pride having a bit of pride um in terms of you know your Muslim attire um and so almost kind of like like a Christian person wearing like a cross on their necklace yeah I think so you know what I mean just like identifying with their faith yeah I think and it's like a people don't commitment. necessarily yeah and people don't necessarily need to read like too much into that is what you're saying, at least no, for you. No, I, I wouldn't say so because I think, you know, people obviously where life is dynamic, you know, so on day one, you're not going to be the same person as you are on day 30, but you also can't tell what you're going to, what journey you're going to go through. So you might start, like, I'll tell you one thing, Holly, Um, I was very spiritual before I wore it. Then when I wore it for a while, I was very lax in my faith because everyone was like, showering me with so much praise and they were like oh my god you're so like your faith is so good like you're so and so it felt like I could just take a seat back and I didn't feel that my faith or spirituality was as strong as it was before I wore it so people don't understand that you still need to work on your faith and I think it's an important thing for me but there are a lot of Muslims who maybe are better practicing Muslims and I and I acknowledge that so I don't think that it defines your faith entirely you know um we're all people like you said about your own uh you know decisions like we all can make mistakes sometimes or we could make better judgments and and so it's difficult because you will never see two hijabis the same they may look the same they may be wearing the same color hijab but the way they pray the way where their faith is you know all of those things will be very different you know it wouldn't necessarily be the same so i think it's just respecting that somebody's choice um, I think in the UK, for uh, you know, they kind of assume incorrectly that someone's forced us to wear it, and I think that's where the problems begin because a lot of people they want to free women, free Muslim women, from a plight that we have not had 
because nobody's forcing mm. us to wear it in the UK. This is a, a very, you know, advanced first world country. Um, in fact, people are like, don't wear it. <laughs> um, so people who are wearing it, it's really an active choice on their part. And I, th I think that's what people um, either don't realize or just overlook. Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better.